My next patron question is from Lance, who was curious about a short-lived sequel trend during the 2000s. What happened with the Jim carrey list sequels? Those were horrible, and I really don't see why they were made. Are they done with making them since Ace Ventura Jr.? So there was this period where studios decided they really wanted to make sequels to Jim Carrey movies, but because he had a strict no-sequel policy at the time, he always rejected those offers. Thus, producers instead made them without him, and what's fascinating is each one tried a different approach. The first one, Dumb and Dumberer, went the prequel route and cast younger actors in the lead roles. The film tried to ask audiences to accept a new actor in one of Carrie's most successful roles, and that did not really work out. The movie got some of the worst reviews of the year, and came and went from theaters. Although the film had a low enough budget that New Line probably got something back from home video. The studio also felt confident enough to allow filming to start on Son of the Mask. With that movie, the filmmakers decide to focus on a new main character, which actually makes logical sense. In the original comic books, Stanley Ipkiss only appears in the first few issues, and then the mask jumps from person to person. The entire concept lends itself to multiple characters putting it on, and what result from that. Son of the Mask unfortunately ended up being a completely messy movie, starring a CG baby with cartoon abilities, and it did not quite work. Like Dumb and Dumberer, it was one of the worst received movies of the year, and it did not even come close to making back its budget. The film pretty much killed a lot of interest in new material based on The Mask, with only a few comic books sporadically showing up since Son of the Mask opened. I do recommend watching a few videos Jamie Kennedy posted on his YouTube channel, talking about what led him to starring in the film. They're really interesting. With Evan Almighty, they decide to shift the focus to a supporting character from Bruce Almighty. This one had the most involvement from the people who made the first film. Tom Shadiak returned to direct, and Steve Odekirk worked on the screenplay again. Steve Carell and Morgan Freeman also reprised their roles from Bruce Almighty. I understand why Universal made this, as Carell is having success and acclaim with projects like The Four-Year-Old Virgin, Little Miss Sunshine, and The Office. Although Evan is written to be a completely different character than he was in the first movie, as he's now required to be the sympathetic protagonist we root for. This one also got largely negative reviews from critics, but it did make about $175 million at the box office. The problem? That was also the movie's budget, which is an absurd amount to spend on a simple comedy, even with the special effects required for the animals and the flood. Universal lost a lot of money on Evan Almighty, although at least Carell's career was largely unaffected. And then finally came Ace Ventura Jr., which decided to give Carrie's character a son. This one did not even get a theatrical release, and it instead premiered on Cartoon Network. I'm not sure how many Ace Ventura fans were chomping at the bit to see a new movie about the pet detective's son, but I'm going to assume not many. The sequel was also not well received by those who tuned in. So it's clear that dismal reviews and disappointing box office and ratings for these four movies were enough to make studios and producers realize that maybe Jim Carrey was the reason the first films fared so well of audiences. Carrey does seem to have relaxed his no-sequel rule in recent years, though. He returned for Dumb and Dumber 2, which pulled in decent numbers at the box office. Carrey will also be playing Dr. Robotnik again in the Sonic the Hedgehog sequel, and there have also been discussions about him possibly starring in a new Ace Ventura movie. Considering Ace Ventura, when nature calls, is the reason he swore off sequels for so long, that's quite the character development. So I think the age of making sequels to Jim Carrey movies without Jim Carrey is over. Although I still think there's a lot of potential in a Mask streaming series similar to the comic books, where the Mask finds itself with a new owner in each episode. You can even make it an anthology show, with a new director putting their own spin on each story. Think about it, Netflix or HBO Max or Apple. Thank you for your question, Lance.